Use me little dog. Hi guys. Well, the sun is finally starting to come out here in the collapse of global industrial civilization on this hot, sticky summer day in early March. It is Wednesday, March 8, 2023 in the great state of Texas where me and the little dog need to start getting ready to head to a picking party. But before we go, uh, just have, I'm over here on the mainstream media, and I think this story should speak for itself as a chronicle of the collapse. Now, you know, for years I have been trying to decide if Nigeria, South Sudan, or Haiti, Nigeria, South Sudan, or Haiti is the number one poster child uh, of the collapse, but I am now have a new contender for the poster child of the collapse. That would be, obviously we're going to Sub-Saharan Africa for this, uh, that would be the shithole country of Niger. Niger. And this is just a report card from what is going on in Niger. Uh, from the conversation, this is uh, coming from a research and teaching associate at Purdue University named Kayanet Kabir. All right, so anybody who does not understand the collapse of a planet and how it works, we're going to go over to Niger. Niger is Africa's fastest growing country. How to feed 25 million more people in 30 years? Uh, how can we feed 25 million more people in Niger in the next 30 years. Hmm, this is a real brain teaser. Niger, a landlocked country in the dry Sahel region of Africa, struggles to feed its 25 million people today. It currently ranks 115th out of 121 countries on the Global Hunger Index, and the number of people not getting enough to eat has increased from about 13% of the population in 2014 to 20% 20 in 2022. Things could deteriorate even further as Niger confronts a perfect storm. The country has one of the highest population growth rates in the world with few signs of slowing down. Well, I think there's more signs of that slowing down than this clueless moron might be aware of, but anyway. Okay, Niger's fertility rate at an average of seven children per woman is the highest in the world. An average of seven children per woman. We're going to get back to this later in the story. So hold that thought. Added to this, most of the country is infertile. And when I read that, I, ha I did a double take. They say that the uh, seven children per women, and then they tell me that most of the country is infertile. Well, what they mean is most of the country's soil, the top soil, is infertile. Two-thirds of its area is located in the Saharan Desert. Most of the country's agricultural land 
lies in a narrow band close to the Nigerian border in the south and is being encroached on by the desert. Hmm. Niger's population has also has among the lowest human capital indexes, which among other things means people cannot earn enough to afford to buy food as they're having seven children. This challenge is even greater given the recent shift in budgetary prioritize away from social development and towards re national security due to growing instability in the Sahel region. To make matters even worse, Niger is one of the regions most vulnerable to climate change. It has high exposure to heat and low ability to adapt to changes in climate like increasingly unpredictable rainfall. This will negatively affect crop yields in a country where less than 1% of its cultivated land is irrigated. It is projected that an additional 2 million Nigerians will be pushed into undernourishment by 2050. Anybody who think uh, for one second thinks that only 2 million more Nigerians will be pushed into, you know, come on. Uh, get a clue. Anyway, it is projected that an additional two million Nigerians, there's Nigerians and Nigerians, this is the Nigerians, will be pushed into undernourishment by 2050 by the effects of climate change on crop yields and because agricultural workers around 75% of the total employed population will struggle to work in the heat. So, how will Niger go from feeding 25 million people today to its projected population of 50 million people in 2050? In a recently published study, my colleagues and I wanted to figure out how to achieve this or get as close as possible. Yes, we identified three interventions to address food availability. Okay, there's three ways of approaching this, but let's look at the first two. Well, we'll get to the third. Okay, the number one way, according to this moron, is better food supply. Ha! Huh. Better food supply, meaning more food delivered to Niger with accelerated investments in agricultural research and development. Well, at least it came in at number two and not at number three. How about less food demand through lower popu through slower population growth. Hmm. Approaching it from the demand side. Wow. This is really rocket science. And then of course global market integration. But what should take priority to get the best outcome. Hmm. We created a model which we called Simple Niger to figure this out. It used data from various sources, huh, including household and farm surveys and satellite images. Yes, based on our model simulations, we argue that unless fertility rates fall, rapid population growth and climate change setbacks are likely to outpace 
possible advancements in agricultural productivity. Hmm, when it comes to the supply side, what is put into agriculture, interventions and spending must focus on higher farm productivity, such as climate smart research investments. Uh, and farmers' access to and adoption of new technologies. Yes. Blah, blah, blah. So, uh, they break all this down. And I'm trying to see if when overpopulation is mentioned again nowhere and nowhere in their integration investment in human capital nowhere will you see mentioned again overpopulation but let's get back to likely likely setbacks likely setbacks to feeding 50 million Nigerians when they can't feed the 25 million they have there now. Likely setbacks. Agricultural productivity growth will likely be outpaced by population growth and climate change setbacks. This means population growth must fall. Funds must be allocated towards family planning and health. But fertility is a deeply political and challenging issue, uh, which makes allocation of funds for these purposes difficult. In fact, in fact, the desired family rate is higher than the current family rate, meaning men and women want more children than they currently have. You know, the seven that they currently have is not enough kids. They, men and women, want more kids, not fewer. It is important to consider this socio socioeconomic context in de designing family planning programs in Niger. Do you think so? Yes. Uh, a big win would be to increase investments in women's education and labor force participation. It is widely known this would empower women to make birthing decisions freely and responsibly. Yes, keeping girls in school also reduces the chance of child marriage, which is both a cause and consequence of pregnancy in adolescence. Uh, so anyway, uh, okay, a big win would be to increase investments in women's education when it says right here that, what did we just say, huh, the desired family rate is higher than the current family rate, meaning men and women want more children than they currently have, and this absolutely hilarious, uh, this would empower women to make birthing decisions freely. Uh, I have mentioned uh, before that my mother, uh, who was not from Niger, you know, in the 1950s, at least in Atlanta, Georgia, I was married to a successful physician, my father, and it was my father that forced my mother 
to have her fourth and fifth kid, and I was the fifth kid. You know, my mother uh, tells me she never would have had me if uh, she had not been forced to by her husband, and she and she was allowed to make her own reproduction choices freely. Now, of course, I never bred, and my other, my brother, uh, never bred either. So at least we nip the thing in the bud. But you hear what I'm saying? If uh, you know, if college-educated honkies uh, in the 1950s had no decision over how many children they were going to have, and it was the man's decision. Uh, let me tell you uh, what's going to happen in Niger if a woman uh, uh, like mentions to her husband that today is International Women's Day. She will probably be raped and impregnated with her eighth children, with her eighth child. But anyway, enough of this crap. Uh, who is this clueless moron? Kayanat Kabir is research and teaching associate at the Center for Global Trade Analysis in Purdue University. She consults with the World Bank and the UN Food and Agriculture Organization. Do you think so? But let's hear some comments. Let's hear some comments from the readers so we can finally <coughs> find some intelligent commentary in the conversation on how do we approach this problem in Niger. Fred, Fred, the absolutely last thing the world should do is send food to countries where the land cannot support the population. More food equals more babies. There is no getting around this basic law. The population should decrease until the land can support the people. Anything else is just prolonging the misery and guaranteeing a future filled with crisis and pain. 35 thumbs up for Fred. Here is B. B has this to say. The international community has donated more than $1.8 trillion dollars to poor countries since 2000, but this development aid has not lifted many people out of poverty. Arguably, it has made some recipient nations poorer. This is because despite the best of intentions by donors, the aid has bred corruption, fostered dependence, and impeded reforms that deliver sustainable economic growth. Nine thumbs up. Oh, Thomas. Here's a name we might recognize in the Doomosphere. Maybe Thomas Malthus was correct in saying that if you feed the poor, they just have more babies. Probably the excess population will move to Europe. Thomas and Thomas Malthus getting 17 thumbs up. Let's make that 18 thumbs up. Okay, how about ELS? What does ELS have to say about this conversation? Maybe the answer Maybe the answer is not trying to find out how to feed 25 million more people in 30 years. Maybe the answer is not having 25 million more people in 30 years. 
10 thumbs up. Let's make that 11 thumbs up. Okay. Let's see. What does Yachtsman have to say? Yachtsman, sending food to these countries just encourages more population growth. Huh. Send usable methods of birth control would be a better solution. Eight thumbs up. Make that nine. Okay. Next. Here is Mr. What does Mr. have to add to this conversation? The only help we should be giving them, if any help at all, is birth control lessons. If you cannot feed them, stop making babies. 18 thumbs up. We're going to make that 19 thumbs up. Here is Nathan. Nathan, I would say they will be out of luck. Western nations that have enabled them to keep reproducing and compounding the issue will have many starving people of their own soon. Four thumbs up to Nathan. Okay, here is this guy named Humpty Dumpty. I figured he might be uh, weighing in on this conversation. Humpty Dumpty, we're going to see a population decline there. The sooner, the better. I have exactly zero sympathy for them. Four thumbs up for Humpty Dumpty. Okay. Uh, how about Hickory? Hickory, stop the aid and the population will decrease. Eleven thumbs up. And... Uh, How about that dirty Texan? That dirty Texan, no food, no help. Let nature take its course. Yep, but we're going to wind up with Bee Gator. Bee Gator, human beings are becoming like a virus on the planet. I'm sorry, on the land. There are simply too many of us for the planet to support us all. Don't read into this like I hate people or the like. It is just a fact. And we now have six thumbs up, two thumbs down. People just do not want to hear the fact that human beings are becoming like a virus on the land. There are simply too many of us for the planet to support us all. Anyway, now that we've finished that little Collapse 101 lesson uh, here and declared a new poster child for the apocalypse called Niger. I guess the little dog and I would need to head to Harry Butt's supermarket to uh, get something to bring to the potluck of uh, at this picking party of my clueless lovable friends in Austin, Texas. I highly advise you to get to Harry Butts Supermarket and to a potluck dinner with your clueless lovable friends while you still can. Are you ready to go to Harry Butts? Bye guys.